five, four. Hello, hello, welcome to Relationship Hour. One of the most unique happy hours that I know of in the city. And I think that we're at a time and place where it's good to talk because we've just come out of a pandemic. We have just been dealing with being basically locked around away from other human contact. So I think that kind of uh, re-socializing ourselves and uh, talking about certain things is a good thing, especially at this time. And I want to introduce, I'm Kenya Brown, first of all, producer of Sam Silk Show, and also co-host for Relationship Hour. And we have some wonderful panelists here today who happen to be clinical psychologists or therapists. Therapists, let me get it right, let me get it right. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I don't know how to act. You know, Sam that gave me the mic, I don't know. Penny Willis, this beautiful young lady right here. And Ebony J, how are you? Having us back. Yes, they were so gracious to come back and be on our panel. And as you know, uh, those of you who have been here before, you're all a part of the panel. So feel free to jump in. If you want to comment on something, just kind of, you know, give, give a little holler and join in the conversation. And so we're going to jump into some of these questions. Everything is anonymous, and you still have time to get here. We're at Silks at 21300 Libby Road. And uh, you can order some food, eat, sip, and chill, and have a good time with us. Yes. All right. Y'all ready? Why, oh, y'all just jump, gonna jump out the gate, okay. Uh -oh. Why do black women feel the need to wear fake hair, eyelashes, BBLs, nails, etc.? Okay, I'm about to... See, y'all trying to get yeah. in trouble, like, like right off the gate. And I'm about to jump right in. Come so, on, ladies, what, what, what y'all think? So actually, I kind of discovered that the women are doing it for other women. We're not even doing it for the men. We're doing it to impress the other women, I promise you. When I found out I'm no longer wearing lashes for me, like the guy's like, you don't need that. I'm like, well, I think I'm doing it for the other women because when women see me, your lashes are amazing. And then so it's kind of like, I think we're doing it for other women. We're doing the lashes and the hair to impress other women. I'm doing it for me. It, you know, what, whatever it takes for me to feel good when I walk out that door, that's what I'm gonna do. And unless you're paying my bills or doing any of that, then who cares? I mean, I whatever. see it as competition with other women. What? Yeah, we're doing it for other women. We're trying to impress other women. You think so? I promise you. I, I, I don't think that, okay, wait a minute. What you think? Okay. <laughs> Okay, wait a minute, wait, What'd hold on. Think? Mike, where I got is it? it, I got you it. Got the, okay. Hold on. I, I know my Keisha got some things to say. I know my Keisha got something to say. And then my gentleman, we, we got a couple people, hold on. All right, how you um, doing? Mm -hmm. I don't think, I think we just like to look pretty, like to change it up. Yeah. I mean, I see other women and I'm like, oh, you know, you look nice. And, but it's not that I want to be in competition or look like them. But sometimes I might look my, at myself in the mirror and like, I want to look, let me see how this look. So but I as think far we just like the, to change it up. But as far as the men, do you think they really care about the fake hair, the fake lashes and all that? Exactly. Well, exactly. Well, but I, I, Hold on. I agree Hold on, when you say you don't do it for the men. I right. agree when you say we don't do right. it for the men, but right. I don't think we do it for competition reasons. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Okay. Like with competition with other women. Okay. I want to hear my guys right here, too. Let me get, Mike, let me get the guy's point of view back here. Yep. Come on. Say it loud, loud. Go on, say it with your chest. Say it with your chest? Yes. Say it with well, your first chest. First of all, you know, I come from an era where, where you had young ladies walking around with cornrows, mm -hmm. afros, mm -hmm. black power, black pride was at an all-time high. All right. Women cherished their crown. Okay. This is your crown. Mm -hmm. All right. So if 
you don't want to do your crown, mm -hmm. that tells me you're lazy. Ooh. Wait a minute nah, now. That, what that, if you just want to look that, different? That, that frame, what if that, you wait, just want to have that braids mine, today? And that, frame of, that frame of thought came from a woman, a black woman. What if you so, just wanted to wear red hair today? You know if, what I'm saying? If you want to wear Chick, red hair, one, two, why uh, would you want to wear red check hair? One, two. See, because see, I feel then, like. Here's the thing what women don't understand is if you are not happy with what God gave you, ain't a man in the world can make you happy. Well, see, that's, that's a woman that but you would date. You know what I'm saying? You, everybody has somebody that they're compatible with. Everybody is in everybody's cup of tea, nor should you strive to be. Like, I wouldn't strive to be something that I wasn't to please your ideal of a woman. You know what I'm saying? So it's like no problems. You just would go after the women who embody what you think is a, a, a good attribute, you know? No, I was gonna say, you know, I really don't have a problem with a woman that changes styles because it makes me feel like I'm dating a different woman each day. But anyway, uh, <laughs> my thing is, you know, uh, like you said, to each his own. You know, if she wanna, you know, look like that, let her look like that. Because there's some guys that be out here on some, you know, flounder stuff. I'm gonna just say flounder, but uh, some <laughs> effed up stuff that I'd be like, dude, I mean, I don't see how these guys be wearing some of the stuff they be wearing and doing different things to their hair and blacking everything and all kind of stuff where they, you know, just wear what you got, you know? So, but my thing would be the dang on flyaway uh, eyelashes, got dog. I mean, <laughs> I mean, how long do you need your eyelashes? You know, this thing be flipped up, scratching your forehead, you ain't even blink. It's a thing, I don't know, I don't know what it is. I can't do it, but. Can I talk I now? I yes, Miss Keisha, what, what you got to say, girl? Mm -mm. So my thing is. Hold on, hold on, oh. hold on, I gotta get my. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking to you. Uh-oh. So, that's all right. You said your crown, you know, you don't do your crown, your neck, and you just lace it. So what about the woman who look like him because she can't help it? Beautiful. What's she supposed to do? What's she supposed to do? She don't want to look like that. She don't want to look like that. Yeah, but it ain't about you. It's about her and her mirror. It's about her and her mirror. And you cannot tell a woman that she lazy because she done put some on her shiny skizz app. Her shiny scat because people have diseases and things like that. Their hair don't grow. So she want to look beautiful. She's going to that hair store. She's going to do whatever makes her feel good and really don't care about what you say. But I feel you on the eyelash action because it's unnecessary. But hair, no. What'd you say? What'd you have to say, Miss Lady? <laughs> So my thing is this, I love my sisters, I love us black women, I love being black. So I personally think that social media plays a big part of how we, up, you know what I'm saying, our appearance, right? Because back in the 90s, because I was born in 77, I hate to tell my age, back in the 90s, we wasn't really focused on long eyelashes, hair, we wore weave, but we wasn't so focused on the glamour. Social media plays a big part in that. So me personally, like I wear weed, but as far as that makeup, long eyelashes and all the other stuff, sometimes people lashes be so long it just look like, I don't know, but to each his own. But now, yeah. listen we, girl, yeah. I'm older than you. And <laughs> it depends on where you went to school at. You know what I'm saying? The, the girls in Euclid didn't dress like the girls in Shaker, didn't dress like the girls in Bedford. So it depends on, you know, what you thought was polish back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Some people felt like polish was having some fresh uh, Jordans and, you know, something like that. And that was fresh to them. But you know, some other schools might feel like, you know, we all wearing makeup and, you know, doing a little hair and things like that. So, I mean, you know, it, it, it again, to each his own. What you got to say, brother? Hey, a response to that question you asked? Yes, sir. 
I look at it hold like on, this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I look at it like this, on the strength of like, if you weren't able to do it back then, and you're able to do it now, you already had a high self-esteem, and your self-esteem ain't go nowhere, and you still got it. What's wrong with going to do something to make you feel good? Word. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at sisters. You know what I'm saying? If you want to go get your eyes arched, lashes or whatever, that's something you're doing to make you feel good. You ain't doing it to make no brother feel good. You doing it to make you feel good. But most of the time. That's how I look at it. But Amen. most of the time, do you agree that women is the one who compliments other women on their lashes? Because guys, I honestly feel that guys really don't care if you got the lashes or the, or the, or the arch. Most of the time they don't like it. So I'm just saying that we, we do stuff for other women because we know other women are going to recognize it. So I'm not saying necessarily we're doing it just for the men. We're doing it for ourselves too, but I honestly think we're doing it for other women because we know the other women are going to compliment it. All right, guys. So we're going to move to the next question. All right. So this one says, I've been getting hit on lately by married men which I gladly turn them down, but why are men looking to play, uh, play around, uh, Harry? I don't know. Now, now when they are married, uh, why not just get a divorce? Any input on that? It's cheaper to keep her. <laughs> what you think? What do you think? With married men, you said about married men, a married man hitting on her. Yeah. That's, Why mean, not just the, get a divorce? The frame, the frame of that is nothing new, right? Yeah. You get hit on every day, right? Yeah. I'm sure the woman that just saying it, she gets hit on every day by different men. It, it has nothing to do with him being married or him being single. When he approached, did he did he uh, did he say he was married? How did you find out he was married? So he had to be upfront with you, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. What that got to do with anything? I'm confused. Huh? I'm confused. What got to do with anything? If he's upfront, is I'm it better? Saying, no, I'm not saying that it makes it. I'm not saying that. No, 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 no. You're, you're missing yeah. truth. I'm not saying that it makes it right. I'm just saying that that's an obvious thing that everyone does. Everyone, everybody hit on everybody, right? Mm-mm. He's married. He's married. You don't know what that part. Have you have you ever met someone who's married? Hold on. Put the mic. Put the mic. Have you ever met someone who was married? No. I'm I'm not used to doing it like that. So that's the it thing. It's not the it thing, but I'm saying it's one of those things that's happening. Yeah, it is the it thing. Yes, it is. It is. It is. Hold on. Get the mic. And it's not. It's not so much. It's not so much. It's not so much the man. Hold it's on, not so much the Hold man. On, Hold on. Women are doing it too. And they very, where do you think men get it from? Men get it from y'all doing it first. Ooh, wait, no, you listen. didn't just no, 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 do the no, double no. reverse. Let me give no, it to you. No, you didn't no, just do the no, double reverse. For, for everything on. it is, for, for everything it is that a man does, right? Right, right. I'm he trying to follow you, brother. He obviously got it from you. So you're looking at your, yeah. Game came from y'all. Game came from y'all. You don't you don't acknowledge that? For everything that it is that a man learned to do with a woman, he learned it from you. You got you married. Was a, you, you, was a, you know you got somebody at home that would be destroyed if you if she found out that you had somebody else. So why is you out there like you j- just out here in the streets? That's what. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Can I can I give him the mic? You can do what you want to do. Hold on. You are doing that. Talk to the mic. Are you married? I gotta hear what he's saying. Are you married? Can you? Why get married? Why get married? The box is marriage. The but box I can't is hear his point. <laughs> I, listen, I think what it is, and you and you do it, you do it with your sons. Your sons is your project. You try to you try to control a man. You cannot control a man. You're not gonna put him in a box. You're not gonna tell him what he can like and what he can't like. You either gonna like him and love him or leave him alone. But at at the end of the day, 
you're going to do what that man needs if you want to be with that man. So you can't put no man in a box. And I think y'all always, this in is the biggest box. mistake that y'all make in trying to get with a man. That's why you can always look around the room and see one, every, every last, how many of y'all got a man? So are you married? married? What? Are, you, are you married? Are you married? The truth. Are you? Are you? I'm just here with. I'm just what trying to hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. Hey, hold on. come on, y'all. We gotta have some type of order. We we going live. You gotta have some type of order. Okay, listen. This is just my opinion. All right. I look at it like this: When you say why do men cheat or why do women cheat? It's all about the company you keep around you. If you family oriented and you got all these people that's doing this and doing that, you don't have time for that. You going over people houses, just doing that, you coming up with your wife, you coming with your husband, you ain't got time for that. You and your girls going out to have a drink, your girls going to get a drink and they leaving that alone, you know what I'm saying? You coming back home. Now, if, if you got some dudes that you hanging with and they ain't on the same level, they ain't doing that. That's why I say if I'm going out, I'm going out with somebody on the same level that I'm on. They don't have to worry about that foolishness. That's just my opinion. That's how I look at it. At the end of the day, there's some good women out here. There's some good men out here. It's all about your circle. If your circle going to make sure you make it home. Like when I leave the bar, you need to be calling me make sure I made it home. I don't need to be going nowhere else. I don't need to be going to get with her, Jesse James, or Dondo, or none of that. I'm going home where I need to be going. But then again, some people make that U-turn. But if you got people in your circle, they're going to make you show you get home. It's nothing wrong with having one person, because one person can do the same thing everybody else can do. But you ain't going to find that right heart. That right heart is different between that thing between your legs, and that's real talk. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. What you got? Okay. Yeah, Angel said. So yeah, side gig, yeah, got dog. Here, here's, here's, what, here's what women in America get twisted. All right. It is not natural for a man to be with one woman. God, so didn't, get married? God didn't create us that way. What Bible are you reading? Mar marriage Bible marriage you in this country means monogamy. Marriage in other countries does well, not go mean... go to another country. He's talking about a what? box. You don't the box is marriage. But the you don't have to. You, yes, you don't have to. No, you don't you have, you have to. Today, to you have today, to. you, have, you have polygamous marriages today. True. Right? That's true. So, That's so true. What, when you speak of when you're speaking of the institution of marriage in America, people think monogamy. Yeah. People think woman, man, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Now you got Steve marrying Fred, you got Jane marrying Jill, you got you have children nine years old telling you, uh, I'm a little girl, but I identify as a little boy. All of this is switched. So what you're looking for is traditional marriage values in a modern world. No, and what it I'm looking for that. is a commitment. I'm looking for if we go to the altar and it's me and you, that's what I'm looking for. If that's we go, fine. If, if you are honest and you say, this is what I'm looking for. Like you said, there's polygamous relationships, there's all of this stuff. If that's what you say we doing and I agree to that, that's something different. This specific question is talking about cheating. What he said in the back, I agree to an extent, but it's also about, like what she said, accountability. It's about your choice, it's about your mindset. At the end of the day, I can be, my friends can be hoes, they can do whatever they want to do. I'm grown, I make my own decisions, and I can do what I want to do on that level, period. However, and then like I said, you're talking about a box. The box is that commitment that you made to me. The box is the agreement that we made, and it's, there's a difference between, no so don't. Wow, wait. What do you mean? We're talking about marriage, Wait, right? Okay, right. hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, let me ask. Let me. One you all hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me ask you just this. this. Because <laughs> I, d I don't dispute anything that you're saying. There are polygamous relationships. You know, um, everyone is not Christian. Every, everything is not everything. I get that. But the problem comes in is where you have a committed relationship or a relationship that is supposed to be committed because you said to that woman, hey, it's me and you. Now, if you got into the relationship like Nick Cannon and was like, listen, this is what it's about to be. 
I'm about to be over here and over here and over here and over here, then yes, I can respect that because that's your agreement with that woman. But if you got her thinking that it's just you and her, then you dare wrong. And I don't care what society constructs you try to, to quote to support the fact that you are a liar. No, 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 no. I said I, I right. said I understand. I agree. It's, it's the sneaky so, part. Yeah, it's just so, it's just the dishonesty. So my thing hold on, my thing is uh I wait. So my thing is this, uh it's All right. Well, first of all, I, I was one. I wanted to dis disagree on a couple. Hold on, hold on. Let's respect the mic. Come on. All right. So, as far as circles, I disagree with all that about who, what circles you be around because you still got to lead that circle. So, whenever you lead that circle, if you, if your integrity is that I want to be right to this person, you're gonna be right to that person, no matter if you who you're around. Secondly, um, men, it's more. It's what is it? Seven to one. As far as women to men, what is it like seven to one? So what I'm, what I'm, this is what I'm about to say. Listen, hear me out. It's seven to one. So this conversation shouldn't be to why men cheat. It's why do women cheat with married men? Because most, most of the, if it's two out of two out of four or two out of five women messed with a married man, then why did she choose to mess with a married man? See, because it's got to be somebody that that married man messed with hold on let me out hold on hold on what i'm this is what i'm saying right. no, if, if, it's, if you're gonna call him a dog it had to be a dog catcher so it was a dog catcher so if it was a dog hold on see this is the thing when when you know because mo most of y'all that's probably going over what i'm saying it's probably the one that, that have been sleeping with a married man before <laughs> you know and you know you y'all sit up here and y'all acting like y'all having i'm pretty sure half this room if not more than had a relationship with a married man in here but y'all trying to play all uppity in here. Let's be real. Y'all fuck the married man, you fuck the married man. Let's, oh, excuse me. We, we can cuss in here? Okay, well, I'm just saying, if y'all did it, y'all did it. Now, y'all might've, y'all might've came out of that relationship and said, I won't do it again, but y'all all know that y'all have been there before because you probably got hurt because you thought he was gonna leave his wife. He said he's gonna leave his wife. Two years later, y'all still together. He ain't left his wife. He ain't leaving his wife if he know he can have you on the side. Bruh. So y'all choose to be a side chick. So don't get mad at the man if he, if he chooses to, to keep messing with you when you you chose to be the side chick. Okay, wait a minute. He said it's because we competing against each other. Hold on. No, that's a fact. That no, that's a fact. Women do compete. Women do compete. No, that's a fact. Women will smile in your face, and if if they are given the opportunity, they are going to bust it wide open. Let's be true. Listen. Hold on. Somebody has the mic. Hold on. All right. All right. Hold on. Somebody has the mic. I just want to say that we 31 years old, so we probably younger than all y'all, and I'm very disappointed. <laughs> um, this is why we dealing with these men that we dealing with at our age, because these the daddies and the uncles and all that. I'm Thank very you. disappointed. It's they fall, it's they fall girl, see. Okay. It's y'all fault. Thank you. This too much. <laughs> I'm with you. Oh. Are we going to the next question? Hold on. All right. It's all the magic boxes fault. Okay, I got Okay, you. bro. Okay. I got okay. You, brother. It's it's, it's okay. all because of the magic box. Okay. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Relax. Relax. Hell y'all start doing that. What up, y'all? 
they re- they yeah. look, they they ready to jump on the whole. Oh, we got a whole table of uh, of bras at the one. Whole table of guys. Yeah. All right. All right. We finished with that question. Yes. 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 Let's yes. move on. Okay. What was it's, it? It's the magic box's fault. Yes. Married men hitting on women. Why do married men just cheat? You know, instead of just getting divorced. That's just a one-sided ass question. It's married. It's married women that do that. Next question. Next question. It's married women. Ah, uh, here we go. Huh? You about to start it back up. That wasn't the question? All right. How can a, how can a, uh, how can a man make a baby and walk away like he never slept with the woman? That's a man question. That's a man question. It's the how woman's can, fault. How can a man, anybody want to hit that? What up? Ah. I might, I might stir something up. I might. Here, here's what, well, Reno. Let me tell y'all. I messed y'all up on this. How come? This is what I don't like. What's up, Tad? How come a man, a man that doesn't, that he just want to walk away because he don't want to have a child, a baby? Why is he like ain't shit? If he really just didn't want to be a father, I mean, it was his choice. Uh, I like to stir stuff up. I'm gonna stir it all up right now. Here we go. Why? Why should a man? No, we gotta be fair. I, I like being fair. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me get y'all the mic. Can can I can I stir it up so we can really get to talking? I literally just drove off the highway. I just literally. I, I just came in from Chicago, so I'm pumped now. All right. All right, Keisha. Okay. So, no, 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 listen, listen. Hear me out, hear me out. <laughs> I'm pointing out things because I'm, I'm gonna come to y'all. I got y'all. Why is it okay for a man to go to jail because he doesn't want to pay child support? He doesn't want to be in the kid's life. Should he go to, should his punishment be that he goes to jail and die? Yeah, I mean, no, because it happened before. It happened. No, hear me out. Stop, 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 stop. This is sensitive. I'm making this real sensitive because we grown people. I got to stir y'all up first. Oh, it was? Ooh. All right, all right. This is all I'm saying. I'm going to say it in a calm voice. I believe that a woman has a right to choose what she does with her body. I believe that. I believe that she does not want to have a child for the same reason that a man doesn't. She has that right. And all I'm saying is if we can just be, no, nah, he's uh, nah, y'all both laid down. I mean, we don't rationalize like that. I get it. I don't, I don't like how they turn around and make this woman sit up here and carry a dead fetus. What kind of sick bastards are you to tell her her baby don't have a head? Did y'all know that? They told her, you going to carry it and birth a dead fetus. You know what that does to a person mentally? And you want to send her through this through her body? How the hell are you going to tell her what to do with her damn body? Sickening. So all I'm saying is putting it out there is why should, why is it that we look down upon if he doesn't want, I, I don't agree, because I, I, I gotta have, you look like me, I gotta be there, that's just, that's me. But if he doesn't want to, or he doesn't keep up with some, or keep up with the payments, because he doesn't make that much, he go to jail. Is that fair? That he goes to jail? That, because, because, the difference is, this is not making nobody feel, this is a grown folks conversation. The difference is, he can one day change his mind and say, well, I wanna be, I wanna be this and that. I wanna now be in that kid's life. Well, I mean, that's a good question. I don't think it's fair. I, I really don't think it's fair, but it, it unfortunately happens. And see, See, we genderize things so much. I just made up a new word. So, <laughs> yeah, gender lies. So, 
but a man, then I'm going to pass the mic, but there are men who do the same as what you mentioned. We don't hear it's not like a big deal. It's like, so what? You, you should do so. You, you paying for all the other fathers who ain't in their lives. But there are men who do it. They don't ask for the recognition. They just do it. Because sometimes in life, you say, yeah. That's right. Yeah. I got y'all stirred up. Y'all was about to beat each other up. All right, so, but any man want to answer that question? Any woman want to answer that question? Why, why the men sit up here just leaving a woman with the baby? Well, I don't have a comment on that, but I kind of, that's not like you, the devil's advocate. What about yeah. the woman that doesn't want the man in her life but wants the child? That's selfish to the child. So what's the difference? It's selfish to the child. I'm talking about the baby on it. Yeah. Anybody else want to hit that? Is it a difference to y'all? She. <laughs> see, see, uh, I want to say this though. I want to say this. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. In, in all, in all fairness, you know, I know we had some battles before this point, but in all fairness, it's some women that I, that have been with men for years that wanted a baby, and she protected herself so that she wouldn't get pregnant because mm -hmm. she didn't want a baby. Yeah. So in that same aspect, if she didn't want a baby and she felt that this guy wasn't stable or anything, she could have still protected herself just like she, like the other women that was in relationships for a long period of time that didn't have a baby. She could have still, it's still up to her to still protect herself. Even if he wore a condom, what if he wore a condom and the, and the condom broke? You know, she still should have had some type of uh, thing going on her end because she got to protect herself. She got to protect herself first. And that's what y'all got to, y'all feel to realize. Y'all talking about, y'all put it all on the man that he should, he laid down with her, but she should have protected herself first. She could have been on birth control. She could even put that little squishy, squishy up there that kills it as soon as the sperm go up in there. What's the little stuff they squirt up in there? Is that, I'm just, no, I'm not saying. No, it's, that's I'm, real. If y'all used to do that I'm back saying, in the day. I what I all about about heard that. what I said. I said that just as much as the women talking about why the man sit down and do this, the woman has every right to protect herself first. That's what I'm saying. And but the woman is still there good. taking care of the in this the in up. this question, the woman is still taking care of the baby. So that's not so why if he didn't She can't oh, no. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Read. Let's go here. Hold on, no, 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 no. Let's bring the mic. Let's listen to her. Let's listen to Hold on. Let's, we're going to pass it around. We're going to pass it. We're going to pass it blunt around. We're going to go. We come here, Eb, then me, Keisha, then you. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, because we won't be able to hear neither one of y'all. Hold on now. Go ahead. The okay, baby, hold on. Hold on, hold on. We coming to you. We coming to you. We're coming to you. Y'all better not sleep with each other. Y'all two better not sleep with each other. All right. I, I was going to say kind of what she said. At the end of the day, if you know what, hap what could happen if you have sex. If you don't want to have a baby, whether it's the male or the female, then you need to be protecting yourself. Not just the woman. Not just the woman, not just the man. Like, you don't, how can you say the woman should be protecting herself? First. If, if he didn't want the baby, why, why are you having unprotected sex? No, he said, let me add to it, though. He said if the condom breaks or something. What? No, he does. It, it, that can happen. Okay. But we're, no. we're grown. We know that that's an option. We know that can, can I, can I Keisha, then we got to go back okay. to the ladies okay. here. Okay, everybody, ahead, please. This is some good shit. This is good shit, y'all. This is good shit. I got to address you. Three times. Fucking condom broke. Had some shit inserted and had some shit inserted. Three times I got pregnant, trying to protect myself. You know the doctor laughed at me and called me fertile fucking myrtle. Okay? <laughs> I done that shit. Oh it was God. just suck the fucking babies up. Yeah, so, 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 let's go over here. Let's, let's go over here. I want, I want to hear, I want to hear table eight, y'all. Hold on. At table the end eight. of the day, none of that stuff is 100% effective. None of it. Table on the eight. Side, on the women's side, none of it is 100% effective. But look, if I want to have a baby, swallow me. What? 
That's who? the most okay. ignorant, ignorant, ignorant. Uh, we got to have one more mic to hear his ignorant this, self. This, this is why I'm disappointed. Once again. <laughs> so, oh, that's what he said. Okay, all right. So, let, let, can, so can, I, can I answer the question, though? So let me answer the question before we get to the next one. So the question, the, the, the uh, question is how can a man make a baby and walk away like he never slept with the woman? That's many reasons. Okay. okay? One reason is you don't give a, you don't care. It's just that he's, stop looking for another answer. He don't care. So now what you gonna do? Raise your child and keep on moving. Don't be stressing yourself out over things that you know. All right? Two, he might not think it's his. Depending on y'all behavior. Doesn't make it right for him to just walk away. He can get a DNA to find out if it's your child. But that's one of the, I'm just asking, asking why men, you said you want to hear from a man, right? And two, he won't give a damn. He might not think it's his. Or sometimes, y'all don't want to hear this, but men fall into depression. They fall into depression and they make unwise decisions just like, just like women do too. We gotta stop acting like we, it's only one way. Okay? All right? You have some, we got, what do y'all call that stuff? Postpartum what? Depression. 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 We, ha, we accept that y'all go through that. Y'all go through that. We respect that, but there are some men that go through stuff like that too. You probably don't even want, they probably don't need to be around your ass. Some, some, some people is a blessing not to be there anymore. Yeah. You, you don't want to accept it, but it's real. What was the, what was the fourth one? Well, I'm going to get to that one. All right, next one, which is only a uh, one. Y'all having a good time? So far, make some noise. What's up? All right, what's up, Spike? Yes, sir. So, so this is a one. They, a woman wrote it, I guess, obviously. But it's really, I, whenever I get this question, I always want to, want to know why it's just one way. So the question is, why, no, do all men cheat? Do all men cheat? Do all women cheat? It's too, that's. No. <laughs> all right, oh, we, that was quick. Y'all want to hit that, anybody? I don't believe okay. nothing coming right. from that, was that table over there. Nothing, nothing y'all say. Y'all, nah. Oh eh. All right. Next one. Next one. All right. Next one. What up, gentlemen? How y'all doing? Hey, make sure we uh, see what, they, what these folks, are, uh, what they sipping on. Um, do you know, okay, do you know when, do you know when it's settling versus compromising? Do you know? Yeah, like what's the difference between settling and compromising? Who want to hit it first? That's a good one. That's a good one. Because you can settle for, I mean, you can compromise, but you, don't, you really ain't trying to feel it. You, you like, damn, they get on my nerve. Yeah, Let's so get to we, my, go We kind of had this discussion before, meaning as far as settling, you might be lying to yourself and end up settling in a situation. So you might call it compromising, but you might settle for something that you really don't agree on. So that's kind of just a little bit, just to start the conversation. Compromise. Yeah, give me the mic. I want, no, we need to hear you. I say compromise. My, my father always told me, if y'all got three or four to five things in common, y'all can work on the rest. Okay. So that's what I look at with compromise. Okay, she might, you know, talk too much, might not want to all the time, but guess what? I might have had a woman that don't even talk. And you like, damn, are you alive? Can you talk? Can you say something? So you gotta be like, okay, well damn, she okay. She she just excited. She like to talk about her day. She like to talk about what's going on with her, so let her talk. You know, it could be any different things with compromising. Now selling might be like, you know what? I know uh I know uh this woman sleeping with it, you know, she she's a... Uh, hey, hold on real I'm quick. To, hey, hey to, Lou, hold on, I'm gonna cut you off. This man here has a Amazon Comedy special. He's from Cleveland. And I want y'all to go see it. Wh what's the name of it, Lou? Mommy Lulu's Comedy Tour. Mommy Lulu's Comedy Tour. Yeah. Say it on the mic so they can hear it on TV. It's, it's called. First of all, how you doing? I'm, my name is Spike Lou. Nice to meet all y'all. Um, yeah, it's called the it's called the Mommy's Lulu Comedy Tour. 
what we did was we took uh, comedians from Cleveland and we shot an Amazon special. And uh, we're going to uh, premiere it at Lakeshore 7 on September 10th. Uh, tickets are 20 bucks plus the after party and all of that. So if you're interested, uh, I'm about to go just door dash this to the wife, and I'll be right back. All right, okay. <laughs> so we, so we can I, hang I just out, wanted you know. to plug that before you left. Yeah, yeah, oh, September 10th. Oh, sorry. Oh, he, he, he cool, man. Uh, okay. Fight, yeah, he yeah cool. September 10th, we're premiering it over yeah. at Lakeshore 7. I know it's across town, but it'd be great if you guys support, because I really rock with Sam. Y'all can see, like, we just come through and, you know what I mean, circulate that dollar. So, um... Uh, then after that, it'll be on Amazon and all the um, digital platforms. Come on, y'all, show your love, man. Come on, come on, come on. That's how we do. All right, that was a quick commercial break. But I like how you broke down about the difference between selling versus, you know, compromising. Compromising is, you know, you like, oh, I can deal with that. I, I don't want to, but you know what? You worth that. Because there's some stuff. About, everybody got some stuff that your significant other don't like about you. Stop, stop, that that new stuff is over with. That new school of the honeymoon. All right, what's the next one here? Y'all ready for the next one? Say it was all what? <laughs> That's a good point what he said. You settle down. Settle down. Hey, hold on, hold on. Give him the mic. Give this man the mic. Yeah, I was saying I think it's always, like, this is my mind. And I think it's all settling because... Um, the term settle down says it all, right? You know, we can always strive for more, always strive to get more, like, oh, she's prettier, she's, she does more, she's, you know, but at a point, you have to, like, all right, man, I'm comfortable right now, you know, and that comfortability is the settling down. I've settled down with somebody, you know, where I was like, all right, this is where I want to be. Um, it, I mean, I can always go try to find more, but, you know, you settle. And, and it's not, I know it sounds bad, but in reality, that's what we're doing. Yeah. You say no? no. Come on, tell us. No, I don't that. think it's settling. I don't think the word, I'm settling down, means that you're settling for a certain type of person. I think when you find that person, then it is what it is. I wouldn't use that word settle at all. Especially if you use it. What well, if you're talking to your partner? You put ING on your it. partner that you're settling, that wouldn't make me feel good. You know, I'm just going to settle with your ass. Yeah, I settled. That settled. would make me feel good. You know, I settled for you. <laughs> I'm tired of being a hoe. You know? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to just say, hey, how y'all doing? I'm just going to settle down. Right. With you. Yeah, right. No. No. You should no. be grateful. Somebody want to settle down. What, what no, you got? not at all. Hey, guys, welcome, um, welcome. I, I think uh, settling is more of a confidence issue. That's what it seems like to me. Like you settle for something because you think you can't do any better. And then compromising is like, okay, we can, we can do this, you can do, we, you make an agreement to compromise. And, mm -hmm. But settling to me, when I think of settling, it's, it's like, I gotta take what I can get. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I gotta exactly. take what I can get because I'm not, you know, I'm not all that, so yeah. let me just go ahead and deal with this. Yeah. That's, I, I think it's a confidence issue. And so, so go, uh, go let, 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 let my man, if y'all just tuning in, I'm going to tell y'all something. You need to come no, every just, week. It grows. It gets crazy. It gets wild. We have a great adult conversation. Go ahead, my man. I just think the compromise part of it is a setup. It's a setup for a fraud. If you're gonna compromise, I mean, seriously, <laughs> compromise. I mean, just think, of, just, just think, let's take, let's tear the word apart. Compromise, right? You're doing something that you really don't want to do, right? You're agreeing to do something this that you really long. don't want to do. So, if you have to go through these battles throughout your whole, the whole course of your relationship with someone, is to compromise at every point. Okay, Y'all come on in, come on in. Y'all can. You have a disagreement. Teacher at the bar, something. you can have a table with us. Either. Yeah. You have a disagreement about something, right? Like he's he's not totally on, on, on the uh on the page with you doing this oh, or that's doing old that. School. What's up, man? And you'll you'll change the whole scope of what you what you trying to do to please him. You're frauding. You're not changing the whole Well well okay. You're no, I don't think it's fraud if it you both sit up there and say, like the toilet stool, let's do a toilet stool. She don't want it up. And you want it down. So how do y'all, you don't compromise on that? You don't try, you don't, because even though. down, my bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh-oh, something going on over there? No. 
Ain't nothing going on with it. <laughs> he said up. I'm just, you know. But she, anyway, don't want, she don't want the toilet seat. She wants you to put it down. But the point is. So what you going to do? You gonna sometimes, sometimes do you try to put it down after you, after you pee? Do you sometimes try? I put it down. I do. Yeah, but it's just natural. I'll forget sometimes. I, I, I forgot a couple I, I times. I don't want to be in the bathroom and, and be on the phone and my phone fall in the toilet. I put the whole thing down, period. Uh. All right, next question. Next question. When should you introduce your minor child when dating? Panel, y'all go first. Kenya, you want y'all want to hit this? Um. I don't know. Um, it, that's a really tricky situation these days. I think that that should be the last thing on your priority list. You need to get to know that person and, you know, see them stumble a couple of times, see how they handle stress and different situations because the last thing you want to do is have somebody who know where you live, number one, and where your kids lay their head, you, you don't know how they're gonna react, stressing out your kids and things like that. So I think you should keep that separate. Work on yourselves first. And she be you know, like that person. Don't just be showing your damn kids all that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, look, hey, look, come here, little Jack, come here. Come here, bring you, come on up here. Right. Meet, you don't know if you got a tendency to get drunk. Victim. So I disagree to an extent. <laughs> um, of course, you don't just bring your kids around anybody just because you like them and all of that stuff. But I think that you bring your kids around earlier, sooner than later. And the reason why I think that is because so once you know, we know a lot of times um, when you are when this when you feel like this is something serious, when you feel like this is something that you're going to continue with. So I think you bring your kids around earlier, especially if you're trying to blend the family, because if you decide to bring them around later, and then what happens if they don't like your kids? What happens if your kids don't like them? And now you're in love, you have this thing, and, your, and parents a lot of time will make the mistake of just thinking because they're kids, they don't have opinions, they don't have feelings. And so if we're talking about, so what parents will do typically is they'll date for a while, let's say they date for six months, seven months, maybe a year, and then they're ready to get married or they're ready to move in. So then they'll have that conversation and say, hey, in the next couple of days, weeks, or months, this person is about to move in. And the kid doesn't have an opportunity to even digest that sometimes. And like I said, what if your kid has, when we're talking about mental health things, what if your kids has issues, this person needs to know what they're getting themselves into. Or if that person have mental health issues, the child needs to know what's, you know, what's coming. So I think that you should bring them in, not in the beginning. So I do agree that you need to know that you like this person, you want to be with them. But when, you're, when you decide that you're moving to the next level, I think that the kids should be, should be introduced. And again, not saying that they like watching your kids or they're alone with your kids, but that relationship is uh, being built as well. I think that's way more important than we realize. I know for a fact it is because, you know, clients, I have clients come in all the time and those are the issues that I see people dealing with. So how soon do you feel is appropriate? Because, you know, we see horrifying stories about, you know, people who has come into the other parent's life and have done some really heinous things sometimes. Um, so, you know, I, I'm very guarded about who I bring into my space, especially around my kids. I don't so think, what would you say would be an appropriate I don't think I would necessarily wait till like I'm in love with that person to introduce my child. Because like she said, it could be something that comes up to where your child has this energy to where they know they don't like this person or the person don't like them. So as they're building to learn this person, I think that's when their child should be introduced. Don't wait till I'm in love. And then when you're trying to put everybody together, then it's chaos. Okay, so what about mom got a new boyfriend? Mom got a new boyfriend. Get Keisha to mind. But that's, oh, yeah, I, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's my whole, no, that's my whole point. You're not, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> I, you cannot, you cannot introduce your children to everybody. What about mommy who knows right. she's not about to settle down with anyone? Right. She has a new boyfriend was, every why, Friday. That's why I was specific <laughs> to when you know that this is a suitable person, you should start making those adjustments. Not to, a lot of times we know when we, what we doing. 
We know when we just sleeping with somebody, we know when we just kicking it with them, we know, you know, when we introduce, I'm talking about when this is somebody who is a suitable candidate that you're all talking about moving to the next level, my opinion is that you should be introducing your kids in a safe capacity. Again, I'm not saying that they're living at your house. It could be y'all just going out to dinner or something like that. It could just be something, especially what I'm saying, blended families, or you thinking about people who have been divorced. And the child needs time to be able to understand and recognize mommy and daddy not together no more sometimes. And and let me let me ask y'all this one. I gotta gotta do this one. I know we're real serious right now. But what do you do after you just got through smashing? or you're smashing and that kid open the damn door or catch you running to the bathroom. Does it happen? I'm just saying it happened. How, how, do, you say, how do you say to your child who that, who that is? Well, All right, but go ahead. All right, so. A anybody ever had that happen? Anybody want to tell the truth? Ever happened to anybody? I mean. Sam. Yeah, me, but listen, I'm, I'm seriously. Telling, I'm telling my to, kids we were sexing. I'm, I'm you going to tell them the truth? Yeah, yeah. I'm telling the truth. Okay. okay. To the young lady, though, but seriously, we all been, we all, you know, been in through relationships, and we know that in the beginning, that's the smiley face, and, you know, you got the first three months, everything is just, oh, he's and she's so this and this and that. After three months, you start seeing, oh, I didn't like this, but he still or she still this or that. Six months is really, to me, I think that's when you start seeing that veil lifting off. Yep, I think you know, and if you introduce your children to this person with before in that time, you don't know if this dude or this chick is crazy. You don't know if this if they you know a, a, a pedophile, anything. You but know, that's so why I, that's it, why I didn't say I, a time. I'm just I'm just saying, come on, man, let me finish. I'm saying you have to have some type of you know to uh, 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 how can I say it? Uh, I don't want to say like you coming in with a timeline. But you have to be, have some type of say, okay, I want to see this person in different situations so that I know how he or she responds in different situations if that's a situation that I can take and if that's a situation that I would like my children to be around. Because once you, you know, you, you got to understand, children, they absorb everything. And every time you bring somebody around that child and they see when that veil falls and you and that, per that, that, that person get into it, that affects that child. Especially if they seen you and your dad, you and the daddy get into it like that. So now they're like, damn, every time mommy, this is what relationship is about. Every time I get, you know, when I get old, I'm getting a relationship and it's always going to be about fighting. It's always going to be about whatever. So I think you got to have some type of discretion and, and have a, 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 a time. If you want to screw him within the first, you need to go to his house or her house or, or away from where the kids at. Get a hotel room then. Yeah. yeah. You know? yeah. 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 They don't need it's to be seeing us. It's not the same. It's not the same for each relationship. So that's why she's trying to say she's not giving it an actual time limit. But before you say you in love, I think your child should definitely be introduced to that person. That's why I was very specific about that. And then we have to, we have to, you know, keep it all the way real. Like a lot of things that happen to kids don't even happen from strangers. Yeah. Yeah. I have, I have clients that their dads or their mom has sexually abused them. Their uncles, their aunts, you know, different people. So it's about discern discernment period of who you having around your child. So I'm not disagreeing with that. And that's why I was specific about not saying the time frame. I guess what, to make it clear, what I'm just saying is that before you're making decisions that's going to affect the child as well or everybody in that household, the child should be introduced into that. That's what I'm saying. It's the norm Never. for women that just do that without the inclusion of the man, the child, the father of the child. So I think it should be inclusionary, you know, instead of exclusionary, you know. Normally, y'all make these choices to have these new dudes around somebody's kid, and, and they don't even know the dude. And then later on down the line, they start hearing about this about this guy, or seeing him out, and he's doing this, and he's doing that, so. All right, y'all ready for the next question? Say, oh yeah. All right, now this is a good one here. How do you know when you're ready to reveal your mental health background. <laughs> Whoa. How do you know? And I guess, you know, this is real. This is, this is real intimate. This is, this is real because I was just on, I was having a family conversation um, yesterday. And, uh, and I said, man, you know, because I know y'all watching. I said, you know, this side of the family you know, we, we got some issues. And, and 
I said, you know, this is why the hell this is going on. This is why they're going on. And then this is an embarrassing thing to people. They don't want to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to talk about it. And they take you, you go to a hospital, and it looks different from other hospitals. And you figure out in your adult age, oh, that wasn't the damn, that was a, that was a, that, that was a, uh, you know, we talked about this before, how they took a lot of those hospitals away. Yeah, they did. They took that care away. We call them cuckoo. It ain't cuckoo, it's a mental health issue. So who want to hit that first? How do you know when that you, you want to talk about, what's one of them, doctors? Uh, uh, yeah, we got to answer our therapists. I would say bipolar disorder is one of the biggest ones when working with clients that I have. I have a client that said that she shared way too early in her relationship that she was bipolar, so when it got to the point where they start fighting, the person used it against them. So bipolar disorder and the, the mood shifting and changing. I knew I shouldn't have hollered your ass. <laughs> That was the you biggest was one. But then you didn't take yeah. your medicine, did you? Right, yeah. yeah. Which one of your personalities? Yeah. Yeah. So she right. thought telling that person sooner, that person would be able to kind of console her and understand what she went through. But it huh? kind of it didn't work out that way. Yeah. That's good, though. That's, no, we need to really get there. Anybody that y'all don't, don't see y'all on camera. Anybody have any, you, anyone in your family that you know of have any uh, uh, mental challenges? Mental health Mental health challenges. <laughs> All right, I'll put my way up. I went to go talk to a psychiatrist. I did. I needed somebody to talk to. I did. I didn't get. I didn't care. I was having. I was having panic attacks. So I needed to go talk to somebody. I went in. I went down there and used that damn insurance. I, I ain't making a joke about it. I went down to Cleveland Clinic down here on. on, on no, Sam. no, shit. Let me tell you. No, hold on, hold on, Keish. I left work, and I had to get out, stand out in my car because I couldn't breathe. I was having panic attacks in the crib. Just it was just, you know what I'm saying. So I know how to now. I know how to deal with anxiety differently because I would not sit down in the chair and I talk to him. And Sam, for me, um, I have as a therapist, as a therapist, I definitely see my therapist. Uh, I see my therapist regularly, and in order to see a therapist. Um, if you have a, what'd you say? What'd you say? Oh. <laughs> um, in order for you to get your insurance to cover your uh, visit to a therapist, they're going to give you a diagnosis. So if you've ever been to a therapist, you have a diagnosis, whether you want to you know, admit to it or not. Um, and like we talked about last time, grief is a diagnosis. Sometimes when you're dealing with grief, so people think they always look at mental health or diagnosis as those big things like Penny talked about, schizophrenia and all of those things. But we all literally just came out of a, or we're still dealing with the pandemic. So I have a lot of people that come to my office and they're struggling with different things from the pandemic, which creates a diagnosis for them. And so, so people, even not even telling the diagnosis, some people, especially in our community, are afraid to even say, I went to a therapist. When Sam was saying that, people were saying like, oh, and he like, no, I'm serious. Like, this is what happened to me. And the fact of the matter is, most of us need to be seeing a therapist, to be perfectly honest. Just because of what we come up against, just being black, first of all, being men, and being women. And then we are, you know, we talked about tonight, we talked about relationships. We talked come on about, in, Stacey. We talked come about parenthood. <laughs> Um, we, you know, we talked about all of those different things that have happened. We all sitting here, you know, most of us having drinks and stuff like that. And, you know, this is a social setting, so it's cool. But what about us that's struggling where people, this is what they actually coping with. So I can't. Uh, oh, then give it to, to, give, give it to her. I'm going to give it to her. Yeah. I, can't, I can't tell a lie, okay? So I wrote six books. They're going to tell it anyway. I don't give a fuck what nobody think about me. 25 years mm -hmm. I was on medication. 25 years. And the way I learned how to do, and I almost killed two motherfuckers. And check this. The she told way us that I before. Learned, she told us that too. The way I learned yeah. how to deal with the anxieties is when they locked my ass up because I had nowhere to go. So you're either going to control this breathing, you're going to control this panic attack, or you're going to have an extra panic attack because there's nowhere to go. You understand? See, so I stood outside the car, which is a beautiful thing, the breeze is blowing in your fucking face. But when you're inside that building, you're going to get it together or you're going to suffer more. 
Now, I do believe everybody bipolar because they said that's, you feel one way one minute and one way the next. Fucking everybody feel like that. That's just a word that just threw out there. But panic attacks and anxiety, that shit is real. But I stopped taking the medicine because I realized I didn't need it. I didn't need the therapist no more either because I trust God for that shit now. Mm -hmm. You understand? All right. My sister over there, what you want to say, Queen? So first off, let me start by saying this. Bring the mic close. People, bring, people, bring, that, people that bring see, it up. see. Bring your mic close to your mouth. People that seek a therapist does not necessarily mean something is wrong with them. The issue is us people that do go to therapy is so we can learn how to deal with the people that refuse to go to therapy. Because it goes back to the situation where Sam just was talking about family and all the hidden secrets and family don't want this, this, this and that to come out. But it's so funny that like you don't never find out the deep dark secrets of your family until people start passing away. Will you come on and say that again? Because it goes on, it, it, it's literally going on in my family, but everything is swept under the rug and I'm kind of like the black sheep because I know the BS. But I just don't, you know what I'm saying? I just stay in my place, just try to act like I don't even know it. But at the end of the day, like, we all need some type of therapy. We all got some type of mental illness. It just depends on how we handle it, how we deal with it, and yeah. how it comes out, period. Because a lot of people had to be having drinking, sex, shopping, drugs, anything. So everybody got some type of illness. They just refuse to deal with it. And maturity comes from dealing with it. It is what it is. And acknowledging, like you said. A lot exactly. of people don't want to acknowledge it. it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You know. And I'm so glad that whoever asked this question, it's a great question. And then you don't want to shame people when they do bring something up because they, they want to tell you. And then what happens is it gets, once I always do this, once a person squirts, now the confusion is there. Yeah. It, <laughs> Y'all just, just going to glaze on over that. Okay. If you make her squirt, All right. she might... <laughs> some confusion, some confusion might, like, might come in there. If, yeah. if sex can confuse things so you begin to hide things that you don't want the person to know. So now you're like, well, I ain't going to hold it. I ain't going to tell that one. I'm going to hold this one for a minute. <laughs> you ain't... <laughs> well, I'm done. Exactly. <laughs> you're going to enjoy it. You're going to enjoy it. Gonna... She's going to enjoy it. I'm going to need uh, some therapy after this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Be debriefed. All right. Next question. Next question. How do you know? Okay, I did that one already. Okay, what, what's a, a relationship deal breaker? Ooh, that's good. It's an individual thing, so let's yeah, hear. It'll be individual. What, what is it? Anybody want to want to hit that? Want to say that? What, what what for you? Anybody out here? What's one? We asked maybe two or three. A liar. A liar? Good, yeah. Okay. Maybe on the side for me. Hold on. Everybody lying in relationship. Everybody lie. Everybody lie. Anybody tell you they don't lie, they, they just lie. They lie. <laughs> you would lie. And, 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 and I put on simple stuff. Now, what I don't like is a person. How many of y'all have met a person who makes up a damn lie? I'm talking about just, I, yeah, for no reason. Just jump you ain't even in trouble. It ain't, it ain't, you That's ain't crazy. trying to save nothing. <laughs> Going back to mental illness. How many of y'all know somebody that lie for no reason, for no for no reason no telling reason. a story to somebody else and include your ass in it? You remember? Come on. You was there? You be like, no. Oh, no, I, I think I wasn't there. What are you talking about? I got a couple of, I'm like, come, are you really doing this? Uh, deal breakers. Come on now. What's what's I a deal breaker? A deal take it to the back, Tanya. Take it to the back. Okay. And thanks again for Saturday. That, that was y'all 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 laid that thing out. It was my pleasure. Thank you for being a great guest. Like that's important. When you don't have a good guest, your show doesn't go great. Anyway, um, bad sex. If you're not compatible sexually, I think that's a deal breaker. 
How many times do you give them? Wow. Because sometimes you can have messed up sex the first time, or you can have good ass sex the first time. Then you be like, well, damn, the second time, you, you it wasn't like it was the first time. You gotta give them two times. Two, two times? Yeah. They don't even get three strikes, girl. They you get three strikes. Two. <laughs> you know <about> two. <laughs> So, so, so the, so to kind of go off my homegirl, what she said, but also what you asked her about how many times the sex. Usually when we first had sex, we didn't think about a relationship. I'm gonna be honest. I mean, most of us as adults, if we're being honest, a lot of times when you have a first or sex, first or sex, sexual encounter with someone, it's not like, oh, long term, unless you like really just out there searching for a relationship like that, like that sexually. But a lot of times once you start grooving with somebody, the sex, y'all make it what it is. So bad sex is. Because yeah, I can, because you can. No, 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 no. Let me. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let me add to. Let me add to it. Because, because, you because you may not want to do it that day. Okay, but you still gotta lay it out. Because you probably wanna, you probably beat it up, but you just, you know, or vice versa. How you know? But you was like, you know, so everybody, you ain't gonna hit 10 on seven days. You may hit eight. I mean, I ain't gonna sit here and be one of them niggas lying to y'all. And you know you was tired. You told, you said you had a headache. You said, you know what, I'm gonna go on and get you some. So you can get this over with and take it off my back. So let me roll on over. Y'all women know y'all done did that. Like, damn. Well, I think, <laughs> I think for, for women, it's kind of, uh, for women, for women. No, What's your deal breaker? What's your deal breaker for you? They won't. I can't. And, and you, you'll get this if you just grab, grab hold to it, you will. I think for women, it just depends on how many mates you've had because each one is gonna have to chase the other one. You, you, you're comparing each one of those people to the next one. What? I are. think, I think. That's true shit. What's the deal, right? I'm just, I think. Oh, I mean. All right, come on, we got, we got a version over here. Rotten First time crotch. on the mic. Rotten crotch. <laughs> Let this sister speak. Welcome, welcome to the first one. You next, bro, you gotta say something too. <laughs> okay, so I don't believe any of that with regards to sex it's an experience and it's experience that you have to learn with each person which work for this person does not work for that person and it increases and it's better over time when you're actually engaged with that individual so it's not a matter of one time two times it might be trash five times, but if you really connecting with that person on another level, okay. it will get better. And you can teach somebody how to yeah. fuck you. Excuse my French. Agreed. So. Agreed. That's, that's real Agreed. though. That's real. Because, no, 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 no. So what happens is, y'all, uh, what happens is, what happens is, lust, lust, we talked about this before. A lot of times you lust and never, and so y'all both may be like this at the beginning because the lust was right there, but y'all never got a chance to, to know each other. And that lust gonna run out eventually. And I think it's about, again. Yeah, hold on, who's speaking? I think for, it's also come about, back. like what she said, being honest. Like if I don't like something, like a lot of times people will continue to, have sex with somebody or stop having sex with them without even communicating, I don't like that, or I want you to do this, or this is what I enjoy. Sometimes people are afraid to even say what they enjoy because they think they gonna be perceived, yeah, they think they are gonna be judged, so they won't say that. That's why I'm like, when they saying bad yeah. sex, I'm like, how do you really have bad sex? Like, yeah, <laughs> I said something today about, uh, I didn't know that, uh, and I don't care what y'all say, I uh, think. <laughs> I know back in the day, um, whipped cream was part of sex, but now the kids getting high with whipped cream. So now you got to be 21 and older to buy whipped cream. Did y'all know that in New York? Yeah. You go get is. whipped cream, strawberries, yeah. fruit, play around and stuff like that. Oh, y'all! Oh, y'all! I'm the only one ever had whipped cream. No, no. All right, all right. I don't care. Judge me. I don't care. 
that's the nineties thing, you know. Okay, okay. Stop, Mom. Joanne, stop. Stop. He talking, y'all, you for the weekend with us tonight. The weekend. Uh, (laughs) You know what? Please stop this shit. Okay, Sam, can I bring it on home? All right, go ahead. Go ahead. The deal breaker is if you put your hands on Keisha. My mama looked good, but my mama had brain surgery because her husband was beating her. And the minute I got a chance to shoot him, I did. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Don't put your hands on me. That's the deal, deal break. breaker. I'm with you, Keisha. Why y'all quiet on that? Everybody quiet. Uh, Everybody uh, stand away from this table. Right. Table Everybody 10. about to say this nothing, table. Keisha. <laughs> I feel you, Keisha, girl. I'm with Anybody you. else want to tell what a deal breaker is for you? A deal breaker to me is somebody who won't accept accountability for nothing. If you can't see yourself in the situation, if you can't see or take any accountability for your part, because there's two part, there's two sides in everything. But if you can't see where you might have contributed to a breakdown of something. I can't deal with you at all, period. And that's one thing we, we, (laughs) that's one thing we work a lot with clients about too. Um, Sometimes you have to just look at that and see how you could have contributed to that, how you could have contributed to the breakdown. Was there something that you could have done differently? A deal breaker for me is somebody not being open. Like you have to, yeah, you have to be open to, kind of the same thing to know or to understand or you know just kind of see from my point of view too like just because this is how you've always done it or how you think it should be like if you can't be open to at least hearing my point that's that's a deal breaker for me um i probably will say if it's something i have to forgive you for i'm not a forgiving person i'm working on that if i have to give you for something then it's not gonna work that's a deal breaker (laughs) Uh oh Uh, this is some good stuff we do it every tuesday y'all Come on out and check us out. Y'all give yourself a round of applause. We got some grown people in here. Is that Robert Johnson back there? What up, Robert? Yes, sir. Let me, oh, let me tell y'all what's about to go down to. I got, I got one on Deal Breaker. Okay, I'm gonna do this real quick commercial. We got a pajama jam on September the 10th. It's gonna be crazy. This front, this, this here, this right there. Wait till you see this, that window right there, Rob. That there gonna be crazy. Hey, I got it. I got it done. What I told her I was gonna do. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. Get your budget. Hey, tab. It's gonna be off the chain. September the tenth. Tickets are going fast. The pajama jam starts at nine o'clock on the Saturday. Meet us here, my man. Go ahead, bro. Deal breaker. He's telling his deal breaker. My deal breaker, and I think most men can actually understand this and agree. Effort or lack thereof. If a man got to chase you too much, after a while, a man going to look at you just as a piece of meat. If you didn't make any effort back the first couple times, he only going to look out for himself once he's chasing you. Y'all must understand that. Like, a, like if a man, yeah. <laughs> for instance, if a man meets you, and he's consistently trying to take you out, trying to get to know you, trying to, without the same effort in return, that's going to wear out soon. And then he's just gonna have a one-track mind at that point. He's only gonna, he's gonna only chase you for one thing at that point. Most women don't understand that. So what does that effort need to look like? The same as I'm giving you. If I'm trying to take you out, if I'm calling you, ask for my cause. Have that conversation with me or whatever. When I wanna speak, let's, let's talk. Or we understand that everybody's grown, everybody's busy. But at least just have the same effort back. But, <laughs> say that again. That's what conversation is for. You conversate, you communicate, and then you compromise, and then you meet me halfway on my effort to you. 50-50 when you want to get to See, that's that's effort right there. (laughs) That ain't no effort. You understand? (laughs) Then if she truly not interested, if she, exactly. If she's not interested, then his effort is wasted. Oh, so, 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 let me, so, let, so let me answer what he's talking about, too. Hold on, hold on. This is somebody that, this is somebody that he's been in communication with. He not, he's not stalking. Am I right? Right. This is somebody you say, hey, woo, woo, woo. 
You know what I'm saying? It's like at once what we, point? Once we exchange numbers and agree to get to know one another, how that effort back? Because if you don't, all right. Y'all ready for the next? You, what, what, Rob, you want to hit this on? question? I thought I saw your hand go up. Yeah, again, what's the deal breaker? Robert Johnson Jr., what's the deal breaker? As we are here tomorrow on the line, Dan Strain. That's right, y'all. Deal breaker for me is communication. Uh, one thing that I could say, we can jump into bed all day and all night, but after I finish, you have to have a conversation with me. We have to discuss about where we're going or where the relationship is going or where do you see yourself in six months, six years. But I think there's a lack of communication, and that's a deal breaker for me. Lack of communication is my deal breaker. All right, next question. Y'all ready? We got two more, two more, two more. Make sure y'all take care of the bartenders. Um, what are your two best sex positions? Again, I don't read these until now. Someone wanted to. Keisha, man. So even though it may sound like, no, 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 listen. I always know. I'm, I'm trying to break y'all down, man. Listen, listen, listen. No, it's a good question. You know why? Because everything y'all just said earlier, you don't have conversations. Yes. I'm not saying you need to have this on the first. It's y'all just said the lack That's of right. communication. We just said we don't know what you like. You keep doing it this way. She don't like it that way. He don't like it that way. So it's a real question as we shine away. Is <laughs> is okay because the, the the two the the the, the most common one is what? Hit it from the back. Hit it from the. Is it, remember that. A missionary. Yeah, hit it from the back. A missionary is the two most popular sex positions. Now, since we all know that, let's talk about the other ones. <laughs> Everybody shy there. Everybody shy. Hey. Oh, they shy there. Okay. We got we got the cowgirl. Hey. All right. Yes, you can. It depends on your size and how you Show are. Me, I got to get this out the way to do certain shit. <laughs> I want to touch real quick. Yeah. I, I, see? I, I think, you see how everybody saw again? No, I want to touch it, Sam. I think, I think for me, honestly, I mean, it say depends. It. I think for me, it depends on the person. All right, man. Hold on. What'd you say? I think, I think Yo, it depends on the little respect. Hold on, we want to be able to hear. Little respect, say now? we can't hear. Respect, respect. For me, I think it depends on a person because depending on their size, whether it's their genital size or their body size, it's going to depend on how we move. And if you, I'm leaving it at that. I think that it depends on a person to know what which position is best. What's your favorite? My favorite is. I'm going to go ahead and say riding them because I can control it. I can, uh, I, I know how it's going to go down when I'm riding. Hey, hey, <laughs> All right. Go. We getting somewhere. Yeah. We get, that's right, 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 right. It's effort. We get somewhere. That's All right. Effort, you want to hit the mic next? <laughs> Get my sister hit the mic. Like. That's it right. Y'all, see, they tried to pass this up, didn't they? Try to skip over this conversation. What's wrong with y'all? Hey, go it, ahead, right? sister. Hold on, shh, 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 go ahead. Wait, it's this drink, so I'm surprised I'm even about to answer this. I hope my mama ain't on live watching this. But anyway, nah, I'm going to say doggy style. I'm going to say doggy style, and as Beyonce say, the surfboard. I'm going to ride it like a surfboard. All right, all right. Okay, okay. Yeah. Hey, y'all, make sure y'all get y'all another drink for the next question, right? <laughs> All right, so we, we said, uh, so we got the riding, hit it from the back, the regular way, surfboard. surfboard board. My mama said I don't know. All right, mama. All right, mama. All right, mama. Mama know what she's talking about. I'm going to have a moment when I see you at church Sunday, mama. I was like, uh, you know what she said on Tuesday? Hey, mama grown. <laughs> you hear me? Mama grown. Ah, grown. Okay. Okay, but but all jokes aside, we ask that question, and sometimes you don't know. The reason you have to ask that question sometimes is because you skipped over everything we talked about. Yeah. You didn't have no chemistry. Y'all didn't get a chance to fill each other out. 
So now you ain't here trying to, you way over here, they way over there, and so now you trying to walk your way through it. Let me see. Last week we did this, you know. So. I don't know. I hope they don't have to do that. How many people? How many people okay with still doing it outside? I mean, he's doing outside, right? I'm with you, Keisha. Anybody like the thrill of getting caught? Anybody like the thrill of getting caught? Yes or no? The thrill of getting caught. I saw that, Rod. <laughs> see, this, see, you see how you have these real conversations? This is real. Thrill of getting caught. Uh, police. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. In some cities, in some cities, they they, are, they yeah they give you a big fine for that. In some cities, y'all saw that last two weeks ago. I talked about that they was doing it at the baseball stadium. Yeah, that was crazy. I don't want to be outside. Yeah. I mean, outside in your backyard. Any, yo, you got nice. Anybody got a lot of trees in, the back in your yard. backyard? <laughs> huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> no, nah, you don't get ate up by bugs, but sometimes it's stuff be right. Yes, bugs. You just, I, I don't know. So you, <laughs> Y'all like outside? So you ain't trying to have sex with all phone? <laughs> <laughs> I would think you bugs like all over me or something. I'm good. Damn. All right, okay. Give me some cleanliness. <laughs> we almost done, y'all. Shower. We almost done. All right. All right, this is the last one for tonight. Y'all had a good time tonight? Thank y'all for being patient. Again, I, I, I thank you for holding it down like you do. I just drove in from Chicago, like literally just, just jumped in. I did pretty good. Four hours, 45 sure minutes. I was Listen. gone. All right. What's the most surprising thing that has ever turned you on? The most surprising something that you was like, damn, what is this? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, I ate some king crab legs one time and I got an erection like I so did. I had king crab legs and some muscles and I was like, damn, what is this? Some ki- I think it was just the mood that day. Oh, that's what king it was? Crab- yeah. King so that's a good combination. I'm going to tell you. Some tequila, king crab legs, and muscle. <laughs> All right. Oh. Uh. <laughs> How many kids you got? He gave them all to you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now, for real. Now, listen. And, and, and again, the questions actually go with what we've been talking about. Because a lot of times you get turned on by, you know what I'm saying? You know, be some, you're like, damn, where did this come from? You know, what's the most surprising thing that, you, that ever, you know, turns you on? What, what was it that surprised you that he or she did? Or, or did you have some king crab legs? Or? Or was it the way the wind was, the way it rained? Because if it's storm, I get horny sometimes when it starts. Hey, Sam, Sam, and stuff. <laughs> once, once you buy king crab, mussels, and tequila, they all expensive. You like, yeah, I'm ready to fuck something. Let me go. That. That's all that <laughs> was. was. You spent a lot, nigga. You was ready. That bill. <laughs> Come on. Who want it? Right. right. You going to be ready. You going to be ready. Right. You still got something? <laughs> A sexy little midget. Oh. Uh. Now, don't, hey, don't sleep on the midgets. I don't that feel about to Look, that way Right, right. You walk around? Sam. Sam. No. We got a whole theater happening right now. <laughs> All right, who we got? Who we got? 
something different. I can Oh no. It's uh I had to, bag up not today. Not to slow y'all down on a sexual thing, but um, I had an event, and right before I went on, it was a guy I was dating that actually called and said a prayer, and was really a heartfelt to like make sure that I had a good event. And it really, I know that might be weird, but that really turned me on. I was just like, <laughs> it was so thoughtful yeah. that he like really was so serious and encouraging. And I didn't no. see it coming from that person. You didn't see it coming, did no, you? No, and that's an uh -huh. act of service. So that's a love language. That's yes, a love let language. me tell you something. I, I'm telling too much. I, I've said a prayer. That's a love language. That's an act of service. And then it went down. Because we was on one accord. <laughs> that's we was a, on one that's accord. an act of service. Let me tell you. Uh, yeah. I didn't use, I, God forgive me, I'm better now. I didn't use that one just to even get some sometime. Let me, let me pray with her. She needs some prayer. <laughs> All right, look, look, we're going we're gonna to keep it going. Next week we're here. Uh, if y'all join us next Tuesday, man. Thank y'all for hanging out with us tonight. Y'all had a good time tonight. All right. We're going to still hang out, fellowship, talk to each other. The bar is open. We're going to play some music. The kitchen's open to 11. Uh, 21300 Libby Road. And uh, it goes down. Now, make sure y'all go ahead and plug. I need everybody who's watching. Ebony, y'all tell everybody how they can get y'all. Come on. Y'all give it up for our panel, too. What? Tell them where they can come and follow you. Uh, so you can follow me on IG at um, Ebony. Oh, this is you guys. Oh, you can follow me on um, IG at Ebony underscore J-A-E. And you can find me on Instagram at I am Penny Siobhan. Thank you, ladies. Thank and if you, you. want to be on our panel next week or weeks to come, y'all see Kenya tonight or DM me or Kenya tonight on Facebook or Instagram, and we'll get you on. Y'all give it up for Freddie, who was working our cameras tonight. Y'all give it up for the staff in the building. Tab not supposed to be working, but she was working, I saw. So uh, give it up for the, the whole staff in here tonight. Thank y'all, Kara, Amanda back there. Y'all got hookah? People need hookah? All right. All right, let's get some music and we good. Thanks a lot, y'all. <laughs>